Hi everyone, Kurt from Pi, welcome back. In previous videos, I've done overviews of a bunch of different aspects of my Lance Air, and one that I really glossed over was the panel. There's a lot of complexity, but also a lot of capability in these avionics, so I wanted to start a new series on that note. Beginning here, we're going to introduce the panel and then use it to get into some of the flying experience with the aircraft. If this is your first time here, I'd recommend you start with the previous series where I introduce the plane. It'll help fill in some of the details, give you some more background, and help you get up to speed, so to speak, on the aircraft itself. If you're interested in modern high-performance aircraft with well-equipped panels, please continue watching. As you probably guessed from the title, today and a few more of the upcoming videos will be a bit more about the panel and the aircraft itself, so even if you're not interested in the legacy, the avionics talk might be interesting to you. However, my plan is that I won't stop at just the panel. Today will be mostly intro, and the in-air portion will be pretty short with just a basic direct-to navigation setup. But in the next video, I'll demonstrate an approach, um, and during it, I'll also walk through some of the flying leading into descents and how to control and manage the speed of the aircraft along with how to fly the avionics uh, into an approach. Before I'm done the series, I'll try to have gone through all of the operation of the aircraft while flying, from the autopilot, to the gear, to the flaps, to the ram air, from the well-known items to the idiosyncrasies of this particular plane. But for now, let's talk panels. Avionics are a huge part of the interface to the aircraft, and I've always felt that as you get more comfortable and advanced in the aircraft, it forms a greater part of the core flying experience. Not only that, they're pretty to look at, they're full of new technology, and if learned properly, where you can take full advantage of their benefits, as well as being very aware of their limitations, they can dramatically help out a pilot by taking on many of the routine or mundane tasks of navigation or flying. I'm not trying to exaggerate here. A good and modern panel can do wonders to help lower the overall workload and the operational toil of the aircraft through almost all phases of flight. It's not for free though. These things take time to master. It helps to be a bit tech savvy, and to get the most from them, you need to put in the effort to learn them. Learn how they operate, learn what they can do and what they can't do. Truth be told, I'm still learning something new about this equipment almost every time I go up. Okay, enough talking. Let's look at the goods. And with that out of the way, and the aircraft here in the hangar on ground power, let's take a look at some of the equipment we're going to go over today. If you watched my earlier videos, you'll know that the main components of my panel are a Garmin GTN 750 Navigator and a Garmin G3X Touch Primary Flight Display. The GTN 750, it's called the Navigator because one of its main responsibilities is navigation. So of course it's got a built-in GPS, but it also has Navcom built-in and really is more of a MFD, a multifunction display. It can display most of the information coming from the other Garmin instruments, such as the transponder controls and audio panel, um, but it also takes in other sources of data from most of my other instruments. I have ADS-B, so it pulls in traffic, weather, and uh, whatever else is available on the bus. It's a very capable unit. Primarily, I use mine for my radios, so Navcom, audio panel, intercom, and navigation um, using the flight planning features. As I mentioned, my G3X Touch is my primary flight display, and so it basically that means it's my main mechanism for interacting with the brains of the panel. But as a primary flight display, it has all my flight instruments. My six-pack, so to speak, is always displayed. Uh, I have the attitude indicator, pitch, HSI, and then my tapes for airspeed and altitude. You have two main options for information that's normally displayed on tapes, like airspeed, altitude, and VSI. You can have it set up as tapes, here as I do, or you can go into the menu and you can select round gauges. Some pilots prefer the round gauges. Uh, I tend to prefer the tapes, uh, with the exception of VSI. I would kill to have the round VSI on my, my other display that shows the uh, airspeed and altitude tapes, but they don't. As I fly, you'll see me bring up other data on my PFD through a split screen mode. The G3X has a really nice split screen mode where I can split the screen between my PFD on the left and other data on the right and cycle back and forth. There's two inset windows on the main display. You can set to be direct shortcuts right into the multifunction uh, pages that you can display. And ha depending on how you've got your plane set up, you might have nine or ten other pages that you can get to in, in terms of the multifunction display. So on my right inset window, I have a map display. If I touch it, it makes the map 
uh, take up the full split screen. And then you can see the menu of the other pages at the bottom. So right now I'm in map, I can turn the knob, I can go to my chart page, waypoint information, flight plan, weather. This is where if you have Sirius XM or other weather sources you can get that displayed. A terrain, traffic, I have a video feed from my Garmin Verb, Sirius XM if you like to listen to music in the cockpit, and an information page that tells you about the GPS connection to your satellites. Pressing the back button always takes you back to the page as you had it before with the main setup for your PFD. On the left hand side I have the inset window as a shortcut into my active flight plan and again once I'm here I can cycle through all of the pages. Anytime you want to get back you can either cancel the split screen by touching that button or just by pressing the back button. It'll take you right back. And you can see here as well that I have the option to change my two inset windows. On my left is my flight plan but I can make it any one of those. And on my right is the map. And again I have options of what I can put there. So here's where I want to stop talking about the basics. Anybody can go through the user's guides for each of these pieces and look at the capabilities and what they can do. But the interesting thing with these newer integrated avionics panels is that there's a lot more going on behind the scenes in how these parts are tied together and how much data they can share. So thinking about them individually loses much of the story. It's really in the interconnected operation where the magic happens. In the background, uh, this aircraft has a Garmin GAD29, which is an R Inc. 429 avionics data bus and it basically connects all this stuff together and lets them share information. For example, both the G3X and the GTN have their own GPS and the ability to define and fly a flight plan. They are connected in the background and they share all of their signals. So I could set up my G3X for all of the nav today but instead I'm going to use the GTN GPS and it's kind of the default when you have both of these items installed. Um, the GTN is known as the navigator and is typically given all of the, the navigation duties when you have these pieces together. But they do share positional data and their active flight plan. So if I set up a flight plan on my 750, it automatically syncs over to my G3X touch. If the GTN ever fails in flight, the G3X switches over to its internal GPS and continues flying without a hiccup. I can set the GPS that the PFD uses to fly the plane by touching on the HSI brings up a menu where it gives me the option to change my flight plan source. Right now it's set to external GPS, which in this case is my navigator. If I touch it, I can set it to internal. It will fly one or the other uh, as long as you tell it to, and it will switch over automatically in the case of a failure. So with that, let's get out and get some flying done.